This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Ruhr Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now outside my home and behind me here you see Volkswagen ID3 Sport. This is just like the old one, except for that. I guess there is one thing I noticed. I tried to look all over there. You can see it. It has a new color. At least I haven't seen this color before. It's red. Like the, all the other uh, ID3s I've seen has been other colors. And this is the 58 kilowatt hour version with 20, let me see, 20 inch wheels. Yeah, so pretty fat rims. The ones that you usually see in the pro version. Wait, does it have, uh, uh, let me see. Wait. Could be that it had double glazed window. But if you look in the back here, everything looks the same. Yeah. But what is different is this. It has the GTX seats, sports seats. Huh? I like it. I like it. Uh, we also have massage seat, but no memory. Hmm. Other than that, everything here, oh, rocks. How do they get in here? Everything here looks just like the regular ID3. You see? Just like the old one, uh, nothing changed, except for I don't even see the sport badge anywhere. But okay, so anyway, let me show you that. The plan is that what I'm gonna do is take it for a spin, get the feel of how it is, and we charge the battery to 100%, and the batteries are 20 degrees Celsius, and this is the 58 kilowatt hour battery, but it has been upgraded with the software. So if you look uh, here, you see, it's different here, by the way. Before, you had to swipe like this, and there's three, three screens, and the third screen would be this one. They now put it here. And I can show you, sure, I don't, uh, I actually, sorry, but I just can't keep track of every car, every model, every software update, but you guys can probably see which software this is. So uh, before, when I tried, it used to max at 100 kilowatt, but uh, now it's supposed to max at 120 kilowatt. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna discharge the car the battery to, where is it, let me see here. I'm gonna discharge it to low, and then I will also measure how many kilowatt hour, if we still get 56 kilowatt hour from it. And then we'll do the charging test. So this is a slightly different video than I usually make, because normally I do the range test, I do the banana box test or whatever. But this time I don't have to retest the range test, so I will just drive a little bit faster. And then we have to go to Ayuntidal and do the charging test. So yeah, let's see then. Let's uh, get starting. We are on the move now, so uh, we just have to discharge it down. We are down to uh, how much now? 80%. Oh, let me test this one. Okay, okay, okay. We're doing about 118. Uh, oh, you see? Even with 20 inch wheels over these bridge gaps, it's still okay. It doesn't kill your spine unlike uh, another car I tried recently. Yeah, these are, especially the first gap there was quite hard, but no problem. Okay, well, we're not driving that fast, but so still good comfort in this car. I like the suspension. I always said it before also. Uh, the ride is good. Uh, I found out that this one does not have the double glazed windows. So I guess then you have to go for a more uh, a higher trim. Well, I think I have to overtake these guys. We are now at Tongan and I don't know if you noticed but recently every time I do the test I always turn around here and see this this intersection. Simply because uh, when I do those timings, uh, I have to drive at the exact same speed, usually 90 or 120 kilometers per hour. And beyond this point, they've been having some Baustelle, I mean roadworks. And well, actually, huh, they finished, yeah, okay, they finished this part. Uh, let's see, it's still 100, yeah, I'm gonna show you here. So you see, before it was, it's still 100 here, it's still 100 some, but you see here, they recently added middle divider. Oh, and they're gonna add some lights also. And then once it's finished in October, they're going to uh, speed it up to uh, uh, 110 kilometers per hour. But 
yeah, that's why I avoid this section, especially when I do 120 tests. And also if it's daytime, it could be crowded. And then I have to slow down twice because, well, actually, yeah, yeah also on the other side, I think. But then it messes up my test. But uh, again, uh, like I said, in uh, October, we can then uh, speed up here and come back and start doing the, the north because there is actually a, a quite a significant stretch here north of this point where I usually also drive all the way to Rutsugda. So, yeah, we'll see. You see now? Yeah, yeah, you see. They, they just move it further now. They are working on this section. So they keep working on different sections at a time. Mm, yeah, okay. We are passing by Strandlysha now on the way back south and uh, we've been driving for one hour and 43 minutes so far. So we're down to 29%. So yeah, we're getting close now. But look at that consumption. 215 watt hour per kilometer, huh? And you see, we haven't been slow poking either. Average speed 112 kilometers per hour, including some city driving before we came out here. So, you know, there are so many benefits of having an efficient car. For example, uh, with, with lower, uh, smaller battery, you then have a lower sticker price when you buy it. A smaller battery means uh, with lighter car. It's better for acceleration, better for braking, better for handling. A more efficient car means that you don't have to spend a fortune charging it up. Uh, what else? Yeah, uh, you don't have to uh, brag about crazy high charging speed because you can still get okay uh, travel time uh, without yeah, super high charging speeds. So I like it, yeah. And look at the interior. Huh? I've chosen the, the blue theme. I like the blue theme. So we have some ambient light. We also have uh, footwell light there. And there you see the pedals. Mm? 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 Do you like that shit? Huh? Look at this. Oh, nice sunset also. It's getting dark now. At Mjösten. <laughs> we are now at the Ionti charger. So, see here? We spent 216 watt hour per kilometer. And the distance we drove, well this one, huh, this one is without fraction. But you see the, the actual distance was 204.7. Well actually it could be uh, error up and down, but that doesn't matter. What you have to do then is take this distance multiply by this consumption there are of course round of errors and you can look either look here we have eight percent left or you can see here we have seven point eight percent left but let's say eight percent you do the math and actually this car has 56.5 kilowatt hour earlier when i tested other of the same batteries they have 55.6 so this one has around one kilowatt hour more despite that we've been hammering it so it means that if you drive a bit slower you might even get i don't know 57 kilowatt hour i'm not sure but uh, the car hasn't done that much it's um you can see <laughs> it's fresh off the boat had this is it 845 kilometers driven so uh, it could just be initial uh, degradation buffer that many cars have um but um okay uh, but we are by the way uh, maybe i should explain also that normally when i measure capacity i will always drive slow i don't know if you guys notice i drive at 90 kilometers per hour and the reason for that is to have low discharge rate so that you have lower losses and then you get the more accurate measurement because now when we hammer it you will then have slightly more losses but the reason why i hammer it because i know that these batteries that id3 uses they they have low internal resistance, so they're actually way less affected by high-speed hammering versus, uh, for example, the um, um, MG set as EV and Honda E. Then at high speed, you had as much as four, five, five percent loss, <laughs> which is crazy. But in this one, and also for example, the e-tron and Tesla, uh, they, there's only about one percent loss versus in the, in the low speed test versus high speed test but now i need to prepare for charging because we have you see here this is also why i've been driving fast we have 29 degrees in the pack that is perfect for uh, good charging speed and this is the charging setup i have to park like this so i can uh, place the tripod and those charging sessions you've seen you oh look oh wait a minute it's supposed to be 120 kilowatt we're getting 128 Ooh, let me uh let me check inside the car 
So, um, because that one is what is being delivered from the charger, but there might be some battery heating going on. Or I don't know, really. Let's check it out here. We can see in uh, EV Notify. Wow, we are in fact getting 128 kilowatt into the battery. <laughs> so it's supposed to be 120 only, but 120. Wow. Makes me almost feel like I want to do 1000 kilometer challenge, but I've just been simply I've been doing too many of those lately. But uh, okay, the battery is getting okay, okay. Uh, but um, we can always calculate the 1000 kilometer time based on this. But you see, this is also why I do it at night because simply because when you do this in daytime, the screen is almost impossible to see. You guys have seen it. Uh, but at night you then get a clear shot and also preferably I don't want to do this while it's raining because you have some droplets on there and oh, look at this huh? 130 kilowatt what the heck it's charging like a bows and it's not only getting that speed for a couple of seconds we've been charging now quite flat since 10 percent oh, oh. let's check it out uh, after a couple of minutes but also, I also want prefer this charger because you see over there, some day, sometimes I place it over there. The problem is that when cars arrive, there will be reflections on the screen. You know, if we were this screen here, but over here, we have no cars coming here. So that's why you don't see too many reflections. So this is just nitpicking. Of course, I always pick this charger. I always film this screen because, oh, 132 kilowatts like a boss <laughs> okay okay but anyway i think if you guys want to see the rest of the charging curve you have to wait for the charging video and i think in the charging video i will also estimate 1000 kilometer challenge i can nail it down quite accurately anyway according to the the calculations i do based on the real world driving cases and we don't have to spend another 10 12 hours including preparation to do 1000 kilometer challenge we can just calculate it so uh yeah now you guys have seen how it is when i do some of these tests and what uh, should i say about the gtx well i was driving it for a while and it was quite pleasant ride i like the seats the seats are wait do i need to <coughs> i need to do this right no the seats are are nice just like in the gtx of course but uh, oh yeah see you also have this extension here but they might be a little bit firm for me but at least i don't get sweaty and of course if you get butt hurt you can always use the the massage seat so highly recommended and also overall i have to say that this car has a nice ride it has comfortable suspension yet sporty and it's just it's just pleasant to drive. That's what I realized after driving ID3 so many times. And I understand why so many people buy it. Okay, it's not perfect. Like I always say, no car is perfect. But if you know what it is and you try it and you like it, then I think you will be happy with it. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you again later.